Hello everyone. Welcome to this tutorial on Elasticsearch. In our earlier lecture, we saw what is Elasticsearch and what are the things comes with Elasticsearch. In this lecture, we are going to focus on Elastic Stack. What is Elastic Stack? There are several other technologies are used along with Elasticsearch in order to implement complex and user-friendly search functionality in the application. Elasticsearch along with the, the other technologies is called as a Elastic Stack. It is also known as ELK Stack. Elastic Stack contains Elasticsearch which is the central part of the ELK Stack. Then it contains Bits and Logstash which is for input purpose. And for visualization purpose, we have Kabana. Along with these components, Elastic Stack also comes with the XPack. XPack comes with additional features such as security, monitoring, alerting, reporting, machine learning, graph, and Elastic Search SQL. Elastic Search is a core of ELK Stack. Other technologies interact with Elasticsearch for robust implementation. In ELK stack, E stands for the Elasticsearch. We saw much about Elasticsearch in our previous lecture. So we will not spend much time on this in this lecture. But in summary, Elasticsearch is an open source search engine that has analytics and full text search capabilities. We can perform very extensive searches using Elasticsearch. What is L in ELK stack? Here L stands for the log stash. In earlier time, log stash was used for analyzing the log and send those to the Elasticsearch. Why we need to send to the Elasticsearch? Of course, to index the data and use that index data for search purposes. We can still use Logstash for this purpose. However, over the time Logstash has evolved also. Now it is acting as the data processing pipeline. So it is having more importance compared to earlier time. Earlier time it was used just to analyze the logs and send it to the elastic search. But now we can use the log stash for data processing. Whatever data received to the log stash is handled as a events, which can be anything. It can be a log file entries or it can be e-commerce orders or we can use customer information or chat messages. Not only this, we can use a web traffic as a data to the log stash. These events are processed by log stash and then transfer to one or more destinations such as Elasticsearch, Kafka, email or any other HTTP endpoint. Log stash contains three steps and these are input, filters and output. Each step in the log stash can be used as a plugin. For example, input plugin can be a file, which means log stash can read events from the input file, like CSV file or text file, etc. It can be sent events or HTTP or we load the data from relational database like DB2, Oracle, SQL Server, etc. Or listen to the Kafka queues. There are other several input plugins supported by the Logstash. So we just discussed three basic plugins like file plugin or relational database or Kafka queues. We can use any other type of plugin with the Logstash. The next type of plugins are nothing but the filter plugins which are used for processing the input events. Now we saw the first input events which are used for 
sending the data to the log stash. Then we have to filter and then we have the output. Using the filter plugin, we can process JSON message, XML message, or CSV file message. Apart from it, we can do data enrichment. Like as I mentioned, we can do the enrichment of data by using any or custom processing, or we can apply the products such as address doctor, which will help us to enrich the address data. The third and the last step in the log stash is the output plugin, using which we can send output events to the destination. So, in summary, log stash receives events from one or more sources, processes those using filters, and then send that data to one or more destination. We can have multiple data processing pipelines running in parallel in order to achieve the better performance of the data. That means Logstash is horizontally scalable. So this way we can conclude that in the ELK stack, L stands for Logstash and which is used not only for analyzing the logs but also to process the data and which has the three major steps input, then filter, and output. Now we got the brief idea about the log stash. So how this configuration look for log stash? As we know, the log stash is used as a processing pipeline. Hence, it comes with the processing pipeline configuration, which includes inputs, filter, and output. In this screen, we can see there are three major sections. First section is input, the middle section is filter, and the third section is output. In this example, we have used file as a plugin for input. You can provide the file name here, either XML or JSON, etc., or you can provide a CSV file as well. Once you receive the data, Logstash will process the data based on the filters which we are defined. In this case, we are defined, we are accepting the request and here we are sending the two files, sample1 and sample2 and then we are applying some logic. Once that logic is applied to that data set, the next thing is nothing but the output where we want to send this data. So in this case, again we have used the file output and we have to provide the path of that file. As we see here, it is a kind of markup language which is a proprietary to the log stash. We can make it dynamic by adding multiple conditions in the filter layer. We will learn in detail about the log stash in our upcoming lectures. Now we know what is E, what is L in Elastic Stack, but what is K in this, this Elastic Stack? K stands for Kabana. Kabana is an analytics and visualization platform and it is used to represent the data from Elasticsearch and perform some analysis on it. We can create a dashboard to show charts such as pie chart, bar chart or geo map as well. We can also create a website traffic monitoring graph based on the data which is coming from the Elasticsearch. We can show those website traffic monitoring graphs on the Kabana dashboard. We can also capture the traffic and aggregate the results to determine which geographic region has a more traffic and accordingly we can allocate the resources. Kabana also can be used to configure in order to determine the anomalies in the existing system. We can also use for future forecast. If you know the enterprise application which has front end, then middle layer and the back end, in this case the Kabana act as a front end application. It is just used for visualization and analytical purpose. The middle layer and the back end is nothing but our Elasticsearch component in ALK stack. 
Kibana uses the Elasticsearch REST APIs to query and represent the data on the screen. Underline these charts and reports uses queries to fetch the data from the Elasticsearch and render those data on the Kibana dashboard. This is very helpful to create a dashboard specific to the business groups. For example, system administrator, this dashboard will be helpful for the system administrator to monitor the servers, CPUs and memory usage. On the other hand, the dashboard for the developers can be used to monitor the application errors as well as the traffic to the application and take necessary action on it. Then we can create a dashboard for the business user to show the KPI matrix. This will be helpful to track the growth of the business based on the sales and the revenue. Then we can create a dashboard for the quality analyst to monitor the quality of the data, which will helpful to enhance the data quality as well as the features in the application. We can do much with the ELK platform. We don't have to just use this for the search purpose. We can use it for analytics purpose too. Elasticsearch with Kibana is the perfect combo to use in any organization. Next in the Elastic stack is a Beats. It is also known as a data shipper. These are the different kind of data shippers which collects the data from the source and ship it to the destination. For example, FileBit is used to collect the log files and send it to the log stash or you can send it to the Elasticsearch as well. The other bits are metric bit, packet bit, window log bit, audit bit and heat bit. What are these different kind of bits? So metric bit is used to collect the service and system level matrix like memory or CPU usage. Packet bit is used to collect the network data. Win log bit is used to collect the windows event log. Audit bit is used to collect the audit data in the Linux system. And hard bit is used to monitor the service uptime. Now we know the elastic stack details, which includes several components such as log stash, bit, elastic search, and Kibana. Let's understand what is XPack and what are the things comes with the XPack. As the name suggests, it is a pack of the feature which adds more functionalities to the elastic search as well as to the Kibana. Let's understand the main features. There are several features comes with the XPack, which we already mentioned, like the security, graph, monitoring, reporting, alerting, elastic search, SQL, and machine learning. Let's understand what is a security feature. Using authentication and authorization, we can achieve security in the elastic search and Kibana. For authentication, we can integrate the LDAP or any other external authentication product. Role-based authorization can be achieved by adding users as well as roles to the Elasticsearch and Kibana. This will be helpful for giving a different access to the different user groups. For example, developer might need more control on the tools to perform development activities. On other hand, sales or marketing team might just need the read access to the dashboard in the Kibana. Testing team might need a read and write access based on the several functionality to perform whether the several group has the proper access. So in short, they will perform the testing for the several user groups. The next in the XPAC is the graph. These graphs may be similar to the charts which can be come under the reporting. So is the graph and reporting the same? 
No, those are two different things. The main difference between the reporting and the graph is reporting is, is used for export the graph, charts, and corresponding data. On the other hand, graph feature is used to show the relationship among the data. In short, graph is, can be related as a relational table in the database, which shows the relationship between the two different entities. For example, showing related product on e-commerce side. If you go to the Amazon or eBay website, if you search any product, you'll see some suggestions. When you search any product, it shows the suggested product as a recommendation. The another example is video suggestion. When you search any video on YouTube, there will be suggested videos. Like if you are watching any song, then there will be song related suggested videos will be listed for you on YouTube. Similar case with the Netflix. If you watch particular kind of documentary or particular kind of movies, then you will have the similar kind of movies or documentaries suggested on Netflix. So graph uses relevance technology to determine what is relevant and what is not and shows the result accordingly. Interactive graph in Kabana can be shown with the help of graph plugin. We can use this graph feature in any other custom application as well. So it is not just specific to the elastic stack. Yes, we can use it in our custom application, which you have built for different purposes. It comes with APIs, which can be used for integrating the graph plugin with your system. The next feature in ECPAC is nothing but the monitoring. This feature is used in Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kabana. This is to monitor the performance of the application. We can monitor the disk space, memory, CPU usage, and take the necessary action. Let's understand the next feature that is reporting. Whatever graphs and charts we see in Kabana interface, we can export those using reporting tool. Also, we export the data which is used underlying these graphs and charts. In what format we can export? We can export in the format such as PDF or CSV file. The interesting thing about this feature is we can export this report on schedule basis or on demand and after exporting we can send this report or any message channel like email or messenger or any other channel if you prefer in case you would like to report based on some specific condition then you can achieve it that too like if revenue goes below 40 percent then I, I would like to get the report or if I need a report, if my electricity bill goes above 50% based on the monthly average, then we can achieve that using the reporting feature. So you can dynamically configure the report based on certain conditions. We can do so many things with this reporting feature. Even we can add um, my company's logo to this report or you can make the some layout changes as well. So this is very interesting and very uh, fantastic tool to use in your organization. Next feature is alerting. The alerting mechanism can be set with the alerting feature so that if something goes wrong, we can get a message immediately and we can rectify the issue with a priority. The base example of it is sending alert message when memory usage goes above 80% or disk space goes above 60%. These alerts can be sent via email or you can send a message over Slack or you can send a message over your cell phone number, etc. You can do so much things. Let's understand the next feature that is Elasticsearch SQL. In Elasticsearch, we create queries using Elasticsearch proprietary 
query language that is query DSL which is similar to the JSON object. On other hand, SQL is a query language used in the relational database. The developers who comes from the relational database background, the Elasticsearch SQL will be very helpful and it is easy to use. We can achieve by using SQL or HTTP or using JDBC driver. But how does Elasticsearch understand SQL? That's an interesting question. What happens is um, when we send SQL command, the Elasticsearch converts SQL command to equivalent query DSL and then it execute on Elasticsearch. Mm, that makes sense, right? So it just converts into the query DSL, whatever we are getting from input SQL and then it fired on the Elasticsearch and then results will be shown on the screen. The last but not the least feature in XPack is a machine learning. This is one of my favorite feature in XPack. It enables machine learning for Elasticsearch and Kibana. The machine learning functionality is provided by XPack and interface for it, it is provided by the Kibana. Using machine learning, we can determine so many things. For example, detecting the anomalies, forecasting, and, and there is n number of cases. So a summary, the log stash or bits can be used as an input data channel to the Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is the core of this ELK stack, which do so many things, which we have seen. And Kibana is used for showing the data, which is available from the Elasticsearch. Then we can add the additional features such as security or monitoring, reporting, etc. by using XPack component. So this is about ELK stack or Elastic stack. In our upcoming lecture, we are going to see the architecture of Elasticsearch. Thank you for watching this video. Have a great time.